The following content is provided under a Creative Commons license. Your support will help MIT OpenCourseWare continue to offer high-quality educational resources for free. To make a donation or view additional materials from hundreds of MIT courses, visit MIT OpenCourseWare at ocw.mit.edu. All right. Hello. Welcome to uh, Gertel Escher Bach, a mental space odyssey. Um, my name is Justin Curry, and I'm a senior in mathematics here at MIT. Uh, I've spent the last year at Cambridge University in UK, um, and the summer before that living in Germany. So it's kind of a reverse culture shock coming back, but I'm excited to teach Gertel Escher Bach again. Um, I taught this course in spring 2006. It was a 10-week course then, and we attempted the impossible task of trying to get through this thick monster all in one go. And it's impossible. Um, most undergrads can't get through it in 13 weeks. I got through it in about seven years. So um, you're going to be attempting a feat here, not to complete the entire book, but to get the essence of Gertel Escher Bach out. Um, but I want to make sure we introduce everybody, um, just to get people's names. This will help me take attendance. And it will also uh, just, I also want you to say, what is it when you read the course catalog that interested you most, um, and, and why, uh, essentially, why you're sitting here today? Uh, I'm curious. Um, so, what is the idea behind this book? Um, I, I mo interviewed a good many of you uh, this morning, and just to make sure that you guys felt comfortable with mathematics. This course isn't directly about mathematics. Um, there's a lot of mathematics being talked about. Yes, do you have a question? What's the class about? Okay, so that, that's what I'm going to go through right now. Um, the idea here is that Douglas Hofstadter is interested in one primary question. And that question is, how does a self come out of things which have no selves? How is it that all these carbon atoms and, and molecules and proteins which make us up in the physical universe, how do they go from being meaningless to developing into an entity which can refer to itself? Like right now, I'm saying, I think this, I think you like this. I'm meeting all of you as individuals. Each one of you claim to have a self. You might remember Descartes' famous quote, I think, therefore I am. So it seems like the I, when I say the I, I mean the things we call ourselves as a real existent thing. Um, but it's a complex question. How do we, how do we get eyes out of non-eyes? Um, and that's, that's kind of going to be the goal over, over here. So um, I'm just going to call it I. But how do you get to an I? You get to an I by having a bunch of meaningless primitives, things like atoms, proteins, molecules, I should say, if I want to, et cetera. Like this, this is what you're made up of. But none of these things mean anything. None of these things have eyes or selves. But, but you do. So what, what's, the, um, what's the relationship here? Um, Douglas Hofstadter, he wrote this book back in the 70s when he was doing graduate school in physics. And this was after him doing a math undergrad at Stanford. Um, he believed that he saw, the, he saw the answer when he was playing around with, with mathematics and, and the very formal systems we play with. Like when we write down things like 2 plus 2 equals 4, these are just, these are just symbols. And, and as, as we go through today, I'll show you completely equivalent ways of doing addition, um, which will look like this. And, um, and these are just logical primitives. Like, and if you've seen any set theory, um, and you know, don't feel scared if you haven't seen any of these symbols, but like there exists an x for every. Um, we give these interpretations, but the idea is that mathematics can be reduced to a bunch of meaningless operations, just symbol shunting. Um, but what's interesting is that in, within mathematics, there exists uh, an equivalent to self-reference. This is, this, is, this is a bunch of atoms and proteins referring to itself, calling itself an I. Um, what happens here, and this is, this is going to be kind of underneath the name of um, Gödel. is we're going to get to some incompleteness theorems. We're going to get to some statements which in mathematics refer to themselves. And 
the question of how this happens, we understand this rigorously. Mathematicians have worked out how do we go from meaningless symbols to something which refers to itself and which has meaning. The claim then is, is that these two systems are equivalent. And this is really the profound idea. I'm going to draw this symbol, and I'm going to use a term called isomorphism. An isomorphism is basically an equals to, and equals in a different sense. But the idea here is, in many ways, we can link atoms and proteins to kind of logical, symbolic primitives in mathematics, and we understand how we get self-reference in mathematics. So maybe we can use this to understand how we get eyes, how self comes out of non-self. This is a really tall order, but we're going to try to do it, and that's what this book attempts to do. And what I've done is isolate the chapters in this book, which I think are most pertinent to, pertinent to this string of thought. But basically what we're going to do is we're going to learn how it works in mathematics. We're going to go from logical primitives and work up to self-reference and talk about Zen Buddhism, consciousness, etc. But that's going to happen as we leap over here, because we're going we're to work up, down, and then around. And we'll conclude the course with some interesting questions about artificial intelligence and how intelligent things come out of unintelligent things. So, when I was teaching this course two years ago, or two springs ago, I ran into kind of five things which I viewed as really important tools for thinking. And this is kind of, I've had to condense a little bit into my famous tools for thinking lecture. Um, the idea here is that Gertel Escher Bach has an incredible number of conceptual tools for thinking about this complex problem of how do we go from a non-self to a self. And um, just to outline these real quick, uh, we're going to have isomorphisms. And I'll explain all these terms as we go on. Recursion. I'm going to leave this one mainly up to Kern on the second lecture. Um, paradox. And this is infinity, which, and all these concepts are very closely linked. And finally, the main subject of, for today's lecture is going to be formal systems. Alrighty. So, first let me go through kind of uh, definitions of, of these terms. Um, an isomorphism, I want you to all be very careful with this because when you start talking to mathematicians, you know, grown up professional mathematicians, um, they're going to use the term isomorphism to mean something very, very specific. The way it's used in Gertel Escher Bach, the way it's going to be used in this class is very loose. We're going to make very kind of intuitive statements like, um, you know, what's, what's the isomorphism between a car, I'm not a great artist here, what's the isomorphism between a skateboard and a car? Um, and, you know, you might say lots of things, like it, it carries a person, uh, it's, it has four wheels. So what we do is we construct a map which also has an inverse. And that's, that's the way you think of an isomorphism. You can go either way and um, preserve information, preserve kind of structure. Uh, if, you, if you really feel like following along, I've, I've included actually a quote from Douglas Hofstadter. And 